Wasn't that interesting? Well, you're in for a special treat on today's Top of the Morning. I have with me Lorenzo Carrington, who filmed that in Ethiopia. Aha! Uh -huh. Welcome back to Top of the Morning. I'm John Carrington, and my special guest, of course, is Lorenzo Carrington, who is a digital guru. I like to call him that because anything digital, this gentleman has a handle on it. Uh, I, I use my little cell phone as if I know what I'm doing to take pictures. And I look at the pictures and go, yuck, <laughs> this man here is a genius. Lorenzo, uh, give us a little idea of your background. Okay, uh, I grew up actually watching you as my big brother, um, uh, playing around with little motors that you bought, like say, from uh, Radio Shack, mm -hmm. kit motors and whatnot, mm -hmm. or wind and wire around a nail to make uh, magnets mm -hmm. out of, uh, of uh, uh, nails, you know, by putting an electric current through that. So I kind of bonded to technology early on, and um, since that time, um, went to a technology school, Mervo, same same school that you went went to. Uh, um, uh, majored in computer science while I was there, and also uh, followed it through, and uh, got an associates in arts at the Catonsville Community College. Also went to uh, eight years at evening undergraduate school at uh, Johns Hopkins University to uh, get my uh, bachelor's in electrical engineering. And, uh, you know, had a, a, a lifetime of commitment to technology in the industry, uh, learning about the do's and the don'ts and uh, how, to, how to, to get the most out of, um, out of the technology so that technology can be an enabler and not a, um, a focus of a business. Gotcha. Now, one of the things that you did that I was impressed with was that you bought one of those heat kit computers and you actually put that thing together and it worked. Absolutely, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> early on, uh, back in the day when uh, computers uh, weren't as um, uh, dynamic as they are right now, I ordered my first computer, uh, mail ordered, assembled it. I had to solder and put all the components together and. Actually, it was helped me out with my engineering com uh, career to um, be able to uh, physically put together the parts and make them work. Both the hardware, I had to address the hardware portion of it and the software, mm -hmm. so to make it work. It's uh, it was an all-in-one computer mm -hmm. using the CRT, which is uh, outdated now because mm -hmm. we got the flat screen um, computers nowadays. All right. Well, now uh, I'm low tech. Because uh, when I came along, the, the closest thing to the computer we had was a manual or electric typewriter. <laughs> Chances are you got to work with a manual typewriter before you ever get a hold of an electric one. So uh, I'm low tech. How do you get the most out of the picture taking of, the, of one of these um, phone cameras? Well, what you got to do is you got to understand the product that you're using. Um, with a cell phone, Mostly, if I bought a cell phone, I'm buying it basically to make telephone calls. Uh, secondary, <laughs> secondary um, concept with it is being able to, you know, listen to the radio or um, take pictures with it. Mm -hmm. So the advantage of knowing the technology and having a cell phone, you're going to have a small sensor, and therefore your lens is. Uh, for most part, everything is going to be sharp and in focus, so you don't have to worry too much about things being out of focus. When you get into the bigger cameras with the uh, bigger lenses, then you can start to blur the background and bring in people sharp. Oh. But you're not going to be able to do those type of things with a cell phone because they got the small sensors and they got the, uh, the lenses that, that cannot take advantage of, of uh, defocusing or bringing things out of focus. Okay. So I uh, just don't shake and just point and click. And just do the best you can, yes, because uh, they're not, um, they're, they're getting better, mm -hmm. but they're not good for like low light conditions. Mm -hmm. Usually you need plenty of light to do that. Some of them have the little LEDs to help uh, illuminate the subject so that you can get the most out of the um, picture that you're taking with, uh, with an ordinary okay. cell phone. Now suppose I bought a camera that's electronically dedicated to photographing. Uh, what recommendations do you have for number one type of camera and any particular recommendations on brands? Uh, Give me a little rundown on that. Okay, and the recommendations that I would uh, say uh, when you are uh, purchasing a camera, I like to buy the lens. The lens, is, to me, is the most important part of the camera. And one of the, um, the things that you want to uh, focus on with a camera is pay attention to the specifications that's written right around the ring of the camera. Mm -hmm. What you'll see uh, from mathematics, you learn that 
you see this uh, item, like say it's one colon and another number, one colon like 1.4. That's the aperture setting. So basically what that is saying is that uh, it's a fraction, 1 over 1.4. So if that number is large, like 1 over uh, colon 3.5, okay. your aperture is not, that's the minimum size that aperture can open up and take in light. Ah. So if, it, if the number is smaller, like 1 over 1.4, this camera can take in a lot of light and it's good for low, uh, uh, low light conditions. Okay. And therefore, I can use it indoor or outdoor mm -hmm. and get the most out of uh, this particular camera. I can always scale it down mm -hmm. to bring it up to, say, 3.5 or, or 8, 1 over 8, mm -hmm. and make it smaller. But, but having that um, option of bringing it out to 1.4 will allow you to bring in most, most of the light and, and get the most. So I, I basically buy the lens and also if you shoot at 1, 4, uh, 1 over 1 1.4 with a wide open aperture, then you want to also make sure that this, uh, read the reviews and make sure that you can get a sharp picture with, uh, with the particular um, camera that you're using. Okay, um, we are on, the board, on board the uh, USS Constellation and we have tourists who are walking around admiring this wonderful ship from the uh, early days of Americans, America's Navy. And uh, we're just here uh, uh, filming another episode of Top of the Morning, but that's okay. Uh, we are flexible. All right, now, the uh, handle that you have on that camera, is that a selfie stick? Yeah, it's, it's kind of a selfie stick, and I, I kind of like it because um, what I, I like to move fast and quick. Uh, uh, say if um, it's a crowd and I'm trying to get some uh, video of, of the situation, and what I like to do is just extend it. Wow. <laughs> so easy. And I'm, I can shoot above the crowd uh -huh. and get still get it without being close to the uh, subject. Uh -huh. And I can see what's going on. And then also I can hold it fairly steady like this. Uh -huh. So this, this, is, this comes in handy. So these are like the type of gadgets I like to grab uh -huh. when I'm trying to shoot a situation. And uh, the crowd is in front of you and uh -huh. you want to get over top of the crowd. So this allows me to stand taller uh -huh. than the... Uh, than, than, uh, than, than usual. This is where great uh, news conferences and you have the subject of the news conference uh, being crowded around. You can put your camera up high and shoot uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, picture of the uh, individual. Absolutely. Okay. Now what other advice do you have for us in purchasing a camera? I, I, I like the, uh, the Micro Four Thirds uh, line of uh, cameras because um, the sensors in the Micro Four Third camera is half the size of the standard 35 millimeter camera. And the advantages you get with a smaller sensor is that you can get both combination of video and photography capabilities ah. built into it. Because if your sensor is real large and you're trying to shoot video, it's going to heat up. Uh -huh. But the smaller the sensor, the less heat and less drain on the battery. So it's kind of like a, a hybrid having both the capabilities of both video uh -huh and photography built into the camera. This is not a Micro Four Thirds okay. particular camera. This one is, um, uh, sen the sensor is uh, a little bit bigger than a camcorder sensor. Okay. And it takes very good pictures uh, and uh, it does both indoor and outdoor capabilities. Um, this is a Panasonic LX7 uh, Lumix and uh, it goes for about 300 bucks. Uh, I like it. It's kind of handy. Um, it can, it's just for good for all-around shooting, okay. for wide-angle group pictures, as well as a, a little bit of telephoto. Um, but it's not going to give you that long reach for like um, bird watching or catching birds in the, uh, trees and whatnot. It's not intended for that. It's, ten, it's intended for like little birthday parties, uh, social gatherings and whatnot, group pictures. Uh, getting the most out of it like that. And this also has a hot shoot, so you can put a flash mount on oh. it so that you can. Uh, do flash photography or you could actually hook a cord to it and put your flash off to the side and you can get light coming from in the side to illuminate your subject oh. so you can get a nice um, shadow in the right yeah, places yes and get that type of situation then it's also has the pop-up flash oh, wow which I, I rarely <laughs> use that uh -huh. because I, I, I don't like to hit my my subject directly with the flash uh -huh. I like to bounce it off of something okay uh, and then surround them with say a soft light and whatnot it gives them a softer appearance correct right? okay. right. um, so mostly the um, recommendations I, I, I like the micro four thirds and um, also you, you can go with say uh, Nikon is good for uh, like the low uh, low light um, 
and or uh, illuminating your subject and whatnot. Canon also is a, a good brand. But um, mostly I've been sticking to a lot of the Micro Four Third brands, which is uh, built by uh, Panasonic and uh, Olympus because I can get both the video and the photography together incorporated in one product. Well, we're going to take a short break and we'll be back with more of Top of the Morning. Go for anywhere. Be right back. Hey, man, this is really interesting. Okay, I'm cut. Hey, wasn't that an interesting clip? Well, my special guest is still here, Lorenzo Carrington, and uh, he is a digital guru. I call him that because he knows everything digital and he's worked with it hands on. Lorenzo, you were talking about the camera and videotaping and taking pictures digitally. What editing advice do you have for us? Uh, this is where your creative uh, artistic talents come in. The advice I would give you in that area is to uh, pick out uh, a product that you're comfortable with, learn the product, and then after you learn the product and you learn uh, best practices from what the industry leaders recommend and whatnot, and you get a lot of free videos from, for example, YouTube on, on how to do certain things with uh, various um, editing software. Then, once you know the capabilities, then you put your artistic talent into it. You want to try and um, draw people into what you're trying to do by using pictures to, to deliver your message. Right, right. And uh, I, I like to always try to um, bring out the metaphoric value in everything that we do. Uh, for example, if um, a, a person is, per, people mirror who they are. Right. So if you try to catch the, the mirror images of what they are and then bring it out metaphorically mm -hmm. into a story, mm -hmm. then let, let the pictures tell a story of what went on mm -hmm. at a particular event. That's what I try to do. I've seen you do that with music and you would have a wedding scene and all the fellows are acting like gangsters and you play something from some uh, uh, movie that's along that line and their actions and their body language at a wedding <laughs> indicates that they're trying to be a gangster. Right. <laughs> and of course that gives you the uh, combination of picture and feeling that you're trying to uh, communicate in your, your video or picturing pictures. Uh, more editing tips. Uh, when you take pictures with this camera here, what software do you use? I use Sony Vegas um, editing software now. Like I said, that's just my personal preference. Uh, Sony is, is uh, they have a, a, a uh, affordable product that goes for about a hundred bucks, but I would recommend the professional product if you're really serious about getting into to the um, um, video editing. And what that gives you is the capabilities of a lot of different vendors out there to sell uh, products that goes with the Sony Vegas tool ah. that allow you to, to enhance mm -hmm. the capabilities of Sony Vegas. Sony Vegas is like um, making a cake from scratch. Mm -hmm. You're going to need, you know, you're going to have the edge of salt, the baking powder, <laughs> your cake mix, everything. Mm -hmm. And then it, it goes from left to right and top to bottom. So if you put a video clip here, mm -hmm. then you can put a still picture here, and then you can have transitions between those, um, those type of uh, scenes and whatnot. But then it's up to you as the artist to keep your um, audience. Mm -hmm. Uh, engaged and attracted to what you're trying to, uh, to present to them. Okay. Uh, you've had a chance to go overseas to Ethiopia and videotape weddings and social events and gatherings and people and places. Uh, what has been the highlight of that experience? Traveling and videotaping and capturing those moments. What has been the highlight? 
Well, okay, for example, uh, you know, in Africa, you got, you know, the, the very huge, large animals. You have your lions and your hippopotamus, uh, the birds. Uh, flamingos are very shy animals and whatnot. So for those type of shoots, you need a, a telephoto lens where you can't get too close to the animal. <laughs> by the same token, you know, you want to um, have enough reach to get that animal in the natural environment and take that picture. So I, if you have an interchangeable lens type lens, uh, uh, camera, then you can do that. You can pop it off, put that lens on, and, and get that focal length that you need so that you can get the picture without getting too close to the animals. Mm -hmm. Like for flamingo will fly away before you can get the, the picture of the animal in its natural environment. Mm -hmm. uh, so those type of situations you run into. And then you have the, uh, the resorts where um, you have a, a lot of the uh, various type of monkeys. Mm -hmm. um, they like some of them are very aggressive. They'll try to steal bananas off your table while you're in the outdoor um, dining area. Oh. So you try to catch capture those moments as well. So you have your camera ready and, and you can videotape or, or, or capture. That's an aggressive moments. moment. I right. mean, to have a monkey try to steal your food right off your table in front of you. Or, or worse than that, you can have a baboon. Baboons is about as big as you can climb a tree in seconds. Or, or flip around rocks. They just don't know their own strength. Uh huh. But uh, you could get hurt if you get close to those particular animals. But they just don't know their own strength at this particular time. Wow. So, you know, I, I try to capture those moments as well. Uh -huh. So those are some of the types of experiences. And then, of course, when you go to the nightclubs, you want to see all kinds of Ethiopian uh, traditional dance, mm -hmm. from the um, Amara tribe to the uh, Gorage to Grinya. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. All right. What advice do you have for people who want to go to Ethiopia? Oh, uh, the, the best advice is I would say uh, see if the see Ethiopia. If you see it from the uh, the hotel, you're not seeing Ethiopia. If you stay with a family, like I do, uh, right there in the midst of Ethiopia, then you can actually see and get a feel for the place. Mm -hmm. I think I like Ethiopia. It's one of the uh, safest African countries that I've been in. Uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's, they got beautiful resorts. I recommend that they go and see all the resorts. I actually mingle with the people, talk to them, and you'll see that um, they're they're very friendly folk. Especially, um, I like the, the uh, Ethiopians in the countryside. Um, some of the friendliest people I've met. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason being is that they just basically living with the land. Right. They grow their own crops. Uh, they have their animals. Uh, just wonderful people, pleasant people to be around. Okay. All right. Now, right now, you're in the middle of a career change. Uh, at least you're you're is searching for uh, opportunities to work in the field. Uh, well, how's that going for you personally? It's been tough, uh, mostly because the industry has evolved and change from an industry where you could come out of school with a bachelor's degree and and you could do anything in IT that uh, someone gave to you or asked for you to deliver on. Now you see uh, the, the industry wants to see a lot of certifications that you can hit the ground running with these type of uh, skill sets. So um, I have to deal with those type of challenges and I've, of course I've gone back to school to get those type of certifications and, and improve upon uh, my skill sets mm -hmm. that way. All right. All right, and of course you have a lovely wife who is Ethiopian, by the way. Uh, you want to give her a shout out? Absolutely. Uh, she's she's a wonderful woman. Um, very supportive. Um, if if I got a if I got a job, I would probably uh, <laughs> give her a lot of thanks. That's, that's what I would do. I, I mean, I'd probably go mm -hmm. and get her a present and whatnot because uh, she's one of my best fans. Uh, mm -hmm when it comes to that. Yeah, and she's in child care and, and she does a wonderful job with a nice child care organization in, in the uh, area. Uh, I was I was doing a magic show and then all of a sudden there she was, you know, as one of the people who work with the children. I said, hi, Whoopi. Her name is Whoopi. Hi, Whoopi. And she said, oh, hi, John. Hi, John. And she went home and told Lorenzo how good I was as a magician. Of course, everybody knows how good I am as a, okay, forget it. Anyway. <laughs> The whole point is that um, uh, you have a lovely, supportive uh, family. Would you like some children? I can I loan you my granddaughters. You can adopt them. No, that's that's right. That's all I do is just borrow them and give them back. You know, spoil them and then give them back to you. 
So that's the best way to do that. Okay, well, he doesn't want my granddaughter, so forget <laughs> that. Okay, so you're in the middle of a job search right now. Uh, what would be your ideal job? What would, what would you hope to follow up uh, your search in, uh, in looking for? Okay, uh, I'm a hands-on type person. I like network engineering. Uh, to me, the problems are very well defined. Uh, you, typically, you have a you have a connection issue. Someone can't connect to another device. Uh, those type of problems are very definable, and you can solve them. Uh, and then the other type, mostly the other type of problems you run into is performance problems. Those performance problems is slow connections. It could be due to a, a malware attack that is slowing down, or it could be because of the technology. They could be uh, on a, a, a wired connection. They're too far away from the actual uh, equipment that's going to deliver them to the internet. So that's why they might be experiencing that. Or they might be wireless mm -hmm. trying to access to the internet. And because they might be too far or they don't have enough access points, uh, they're going to have difficulties possibly in uh, getting a good clean internet connection. Right, so you're a problem solver. You like the kind of job that challenges you with uh, problems that you can unravel and then come up with solutions for. Absolutely. I make my living on troubleshooting. And you'll find in the industry that if you're a good troubleshooter, then uh, you're going to have a long life because uh -huh. you, you'll make your living on troubleshooting. All right. And, and this is something that I like. I like to uh, teach. Um, in fact, you know, if I, once I gain knowledge of a particular particular situation, mm -hmm. I try to uh, teach others how to get to those uh, type of answers as quickly as possible as well. Okay. And of course, you work in digital security and you've helped credit card companies solve problems that cost them money if they didn't resolve the issues. Oh, absolutely. Um, like, for example, some of the solutions that I've came up with is it's like um, they, are, this, they got this product like, um, like Erlang's. Um, it's, a, it's based on a curing theorem. It helps to process transactions uh, in a way that you don't bottleneck those type of transactions. Um, the way Erlang's work is like, um, like our telephone system. Everybody can't make a telephone call at the same time. For example, if you have a million people in, uh, in, a, in say, a, a given town, mm -hmm. if all one million makes a phone call at the same time, it's not going to happen. It's crash. And it's, co it's not cost effective for the telephone company to allow one million connections for mm -hmm. one million people. Mm -hmm. The reality is Erlang's. That means that basically you give them a small subset mm -hmm. to address the peak, mm -hmm. the peak usage of that system. Gotcha. And then the airlines might say that you only need uh, 25,000 connections during peak time. So you're doing the accounting uh -huh. to measure what's going on. In transaction processing, you have to do that with no blockage. Okay. All right. Well, I tell you, man, you are certainly knowledgeable and you've been a tremendous help to me and helped me to understand how to how to work this right here. Uh, but uh, we're going to take a little break and we'll come back with more of Top of the Morning. Don't go anywhere. USS Constellation, pride of the fleet from back in the 1700s when America was first getting started and trying to defend its shores. And as you can hear, there are different boats in the harbor riding around, cleaning the harbor, uh, doing things that are necessary to make this a wonderful tourist attraction. Baltimore's Inner Harbor, the USS Constellation. Anyway, my guest is Lorenzo Carrington, my brother, and he's a digital guru. He's a genius. And I, I, Rennie, uh, do you have any, I call him Rennie, that's his nickname. Uh, do you have any final thoughts? And by the way, how can people contact you in case they have a job for you or they have questions about anything you've covered? Okay, let me just wrap up some of the things that we talked about. Um, we talked about cameras. Uh, when I buy a camera, I really focus on the lens. The lens to me is the most important component of the camera. You buy a great lens, you don't have to do a lot of work, you're going to get good sharp pictures. 
focus on that aperture setting, the one colon, and the, the uh, smaller that number, the, more, the wider the aperture can open okay. up. So that's with the camera. Uh, we talked about uh, Ethiopia. Um, the best way to see Ethiopia or any country, live with somebody, stay with somebody that actually uh, live in the, um, uh, the country, and they can show you around, and they can show you how to have a safe and wonderful, ex wonderful experience to actually see the country. Don't see the country from the hotel. Mm. See the country by staying with, uh, with some folk. And then the uh, third thing is, uh, I'm into technology, uh, uh, photography and videography is just a hobby for me. I always like to perfect whatever I do and I just enjoy the, the photography and videography uh, as a side. But um, I make my living in uh, IT and uh, I've done the full gamut of IT from hardware to software design to a database uh, design um, and programming. Um, I've done anything that uh, folk ask me to do. Mostly I focus on network engineering. This is what I, I'm looking to uh, continue in. And um, that's where I want to I go with my, my uh, IT career at this particular time because most of the time these companies want to hit the ground, hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. And network engineering is something that I can, I can hit the ground running with. All right. Well, uh, our contact information, how can people reach you if they have a job or they have questions? Right, um, I can be reached uh, Lorenzo Carrington, uh, and that we um, Lorenzo dot edu one at Verizon dot net, and that's my email address. Mm -hmm. And then my uh, residential phone number will be four one zero nine nine two nine six three nine. Okay, please repeat that number. Your email would be on the screen that I can repeat. It. Okay, and the number again is four one zero nine nine two. 9639. Well, this has been another wonderful episode of Top of the Morning. I'm John Carrington. Lorenzo, I want to thank you for being a yeah, part of the Thank you for having me. Hey, my pleasure. And uh, hey, have a nice day.